Hey, what's going on guys? I'm going to start creating some short videos that include one or two programming tools that can help you in your production. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at and install the Commander Console for Windows. Okay, we all know that the CMD command line for Windows just sucks. Uh, PowerShell is a little better, but I'd still prefer something else. PowerShell isn't as customizable as most of the modern Linux terminals, and it's also really ugly. Okay, there's a few different alternatives that you can use. I've actually been using Git Bash for a while now, but I just recently started using Commander, and I really like it a lot. You might see it in some of my Windows-based videos, so I figured I'd make a, a quick video showing you guys it, and maybe if you want, you can install it and uh, work with that. Okay, we're also going to take a look at and install the terminal package for the Sublime, Sublime Text Editor. Okay, and then I'm going to show you how to configure it so that we can just do a quick keyboard shortcut and it'll open Commander right in the, the project directory. Okay, which is really valuable to workflow. All right, rather than, you know, opening, opening up a regular command line and navigating to that folder and all that junk. All right, so that's that's going to be the goal of these videos is to to make you guys more productive in your programming. So before we get into it and install Commander, let's just take a look at some of the features. Now, there's a huge list of features. These are only some of them. Um, these are some of the obvious ones. Now, Commander is actually made up of a few different technologies. It's a fork of Con Emu or Con EMU which is a console program for Windows. So its look and its feel is very similar to Conemu. So if you've used that before, you should be very comfortable with Commander. Okay, it also adds Clink, which gives it uh, powerful bash style command line editing, completion, and much more. And if you want to look at the, the features of each technology, I'd suggest going to the documentation for that rather than looking at the Commander website because there's honestly not that much uh, in their documentation. They, they barely even have any documentation as far as I can tell. It also implements Git for Windows, so you don't have to install any third-party Git program. You can just, just use the Git command as you would, um, you know, if you had installed it separately. Okay, it's also uh, very portable. You can just package it up in a folder and put it on a USB stick, and you can use it from anywhere on any system. All right. Um, as far as appearance, it looks a thousand times better than the Windows um, CMD command line, and it looks much better than PowerShell. You have a, a wide range of themes you can choose from, uh, and it's just miles ahead of anything else that's included in default Windows. Okay, in addition to that, there's really powerful customization options, themes, startup tasks, um, keys and macros, integration with other tools like PuTTY, and so on. There's also some really awesome shortcuts, and uh, this makes your life much easier, makes you more productive, and we're going to take a look at some of those in a few minutes. Copying and pasting is something that we do quite a bit in programming, and Commander makes it simple with multiple methods of doing it, such as using Control-C and Control-V. All right, the uh, syntax highlighting is also uh, really great for things like bash scripts and other stuff. Uh, there's a huge range of themes with all types of colors for uh, color schemes for highlighting. All right, and another great feature is the multiple tabbed consoles. Okay, so you can simply just say add, uh, create new console or whatever, and it'll open up a new tab. And this comes in handy for uh, an example would be if you're using MongoDB and you want to run the server, you want to run the database, and then you want to use the shell to, uh, you know, to enter your Mongo commands. So you would just open up, you know, one tab and, and run the server, open up another one, and run your shell. Okay, you can also create custom tasks and predefined commands, and you can run those at any time by name or by hotkey. Commander also has uh, powerful search capabilities with a search box built right into the interface. All right, so these are just some of the, the features that Commander offers. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get Commander set up. Um, before we do that, I just want to show you uh, a couple websites here. This is the Clink website and documentation. If you want to read over that, Clink is a, a powerful bash style command line editing tool. Okay, so it has different features like uh, code completion, and uh, different shortcuts and so on. 
Uh, and then this is the website for Con Emu or Con EMU. And you can see this actually looks very similar to Commander. And um, this is where you want to look for documentation on the console. So if we go to documentation, you can see there's quite a bit here, all the settings, all the features and so on. All right, so I just wanted to show you that. And then this is the terminal package we're going to install for uh, Sublime Text. And if we scroll down here, you can see we can actually add Commander as our terminal. And then we can just do a simple shortcut to open that up in the current directory. So if we go to cmder.net and we go down to the download area, you can download the mini version, which is six megabytes or the full version with Git, and that's 84 megabytes. OK, so we're going to use the full version. I actually already have it uh, downloaded, so I'm not going to save it, but you guys should. And then go ahead and open that up. So I'm going to go to, let's see, uh, downloads and commander. OK, we're going to open up the zip file. And this is the entire application. There's no installer or anything like that. You just want to put this somewhere uh, where you can access it. We're going to put it in the C drive. C drive and then in program files with all the other software. OK, and then we'll just say new folder and I'll call this CMDER. And then I'm just going to drag and drop everything in this zip file over. All right, and you can see this the uh, commander executable is right there. So all we have to do is run that. All right, so now that we brought that over, we can go ahead and open up commander. So I'm going to run as administrator. And it's opening on a different monitor because this is this isn't my main monitor, but this popped up, which is telling us that there's a new stable version. So I'm just going to go ahead and click download. All right, and then I got another one that says uh, close con emu window and update. So I'm going to click close and update. All right, let me just minimize this stuff. All right, so it should be all set. And this is the window that opened. You can see it opens it opens in your user directory. And this looks much, much nicer. In fact, let's pull up the standard Windows command line. And if you look at the two, this is much nicer. All right, and there's not many options with this. We have this one edit where we can do some copying and pasting and finding. If you look over here, there's a lot of options here. And if we look at the settings, there's a ton of stuff. OK, so if we want to change uh, the size, the size of the window and position, the appearance, uh, background. And if we go down to features and then colors, from here we can we can make a custom theme with all the different colors for foregrounds and backgrounds but we can also choose uh, a pre a predefined scheme i think the default is this monokai that's what we're viewing here uh, but if we choose for instance this base 16 you'll see it has a live update or a live preview powershell which i don't like uh, what else we got here twilight uh, ubuntu x term so there's a lot of different themes here to choose from. I'm just going to keep the standard uh, Monokai. All right, and let's see what else we have here. Um, keyboard shortcuts, it looks like. I'm very new to this, so there's a lot of stuff in here that I don't know. And if you guys have any uh, information on this and, and some cool stuff to do, uh, leave that in the comments. All right, we can customize the status bar and so on. So that's the settings. Let's close that up. And then let's take a look at the tabs. We'll close that. All right, so you can see down here we have one tab open. That's this window. And we can make this bigger with holding control and then the mouse wheel. Uh, but if we want to have a new tab or a new console, we can just say new console. And we can give it a name if we want. But we're just going to press start. OK, so you can see now we have another window open. Or another tab open, rather. OK. Uh, so that's very useful. Uh, let's go to the home page of Commander. And we have these different keyboard shortcuts. Uh, I think this one's really cool. Control Alt U and you can traverse up the directory structure. So if we go and let's open this up and let's say, what do we have here? We'll say LS and let's go into, I don't know, documents. OK, now if we want to go back up the structure, we can do uh, control was it control alt U. You'll see it go, goes back to users. Brad keep going, goes up to users, goes up to the C drive. 
All right, so that that's pretty cool. All right, and let's see what else we have here. So control plus a back tick looks like it'll open it or summon it from the task bar. So let's try that. We'll say control and then back tick. Oh, yeah, it goes back down to the task bar. Uh, let's see when alt P would be preferences. So when off alt P quickly opens the preferences. Uh, if we want to close a tab, we can do control W. Let's try that. So control W closes the tab. And if we want to open a tab, we can do control T. And notice that we can also restrict the current user as well. Or we can choose another user and we can say new console split to the bottom to the right or layered and we can also open a new window if we want so let's click tab and you can also rename these so if, let's see rename tab and let's say this was going to be the mongo shell or something we could say uh, mongo shell and save that okay so that's a, a nice little feature what else can we do here we can set priorities for tabs uh, we can restart or duplicate we can close obviously and let's see view oh you can change the uh, the um, theme for separate tabs as well all right now let's check out copy and paste so if I want to just copy some text here and go over here and I just right click and it will paste it right in let's try control control C and control V okay so we'll do a control C come over here control V paste it right in so that's pretty cool all right so we're kind of running out of time here so what we're going to do now is install the terminal package for sublime text and then we're going to set it to the commander console so to install packages in sublime text you have to install package control and let me just bring that up just for the people that that don't know this but uh, if you're using sublime text 3 you just want to show the console view show console copy this and paste that in if you're using sublime text 2 you want to copy that and paste that in all right or you can do it manually and you can open up uh, preferences browse packages and you can download the package control dot sublime package and copy it into installed packages all right so uh, let's go ahead and go back to this screen here uh, let's see installation download package control we already I already have that installed so I'm gonna open up sublime just grab a new window all right so we're gonna open up we're gonna do uh, control shift P and then we want to go down to package control install package and we're gonna search for terminal okay it's right there first one let's click enter and now that should be installed so if we go to let's see preferences package settings you'll see terminal now as is by default if we do control I think it's control shift T no place to open terminal 2 oh that's right uh, let's go ahead and just uh, open up a project folder here so let's say sandbox and I'll just open this up all right so now we're in this directory here and if I do control shift T it opened on another screen let me just bring it down by default it's going to open PowerShell in Windows so I want to set it to open commander so what we have to do is go to preferences package settings terminal and then settings default and right in here I'm gonna grab it from this page we want to put this this line okay because actually I didn't say commander mini it's in the just commander so I'm gonna just change that all right so I'll just change that to commander and for the parameters we're gonna just grab this right here and put that right in this array all right so let's go ahead and save that and then I'm pretty sure we have to close sublime text so I'm just gonna close that and let me close my other window as well and then we'll open it back up let me just grab it all right so now if we do uh, control shift T I did it again we need a project folder all right control shift T 
and I got an error. Failed to back up con emu xml to config folder. Not sure what the hell that means. All right, let me try to put that somewhere else actually. So let's see. I had it in program files. Let's cut and put it in program data. Paste that in. All right, and then I'm going to go back to here settings and let's change this to program data and save. And now let's do control shift T. There we go. So I guess there's an issue with having it in program files. I, I don't know why, because I could have swore that I put it there before and it worked, but I don't know if you guys know anything about that. Leave it in the comments. But now we have commander set up on Windows and we also have the terminal package set up to open commander uh, in the current directory. So this is really nice for workflow instead of having to go and open a, a Windows command line and then navigate to the current folder and open another one if you need another one instead of just opening another tab. Uh, so and guys, I'm not the, the spokesperson for Commander or Sublime Text, so if you think that something else is better, that's fine. Share your opinion, but please don't be a dick. It seems whenever I introduce a new tool or a piece of software, we get the angry nerd squad in the comments bashing it. So uh, I don't live and die by any specific editor or console or operating system. There's pros and cons to everything, and it's all it all comes down to preference. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. If you're not subscribed, please do so, and I will see you next time.